Can you check it? So that will help you concentrate <laughs> later on tonight. Thank you. 
So if everybody is coming along this evening, whether it's in person or at home, thank you very much for having the interest and being, being prepared to take uh, your time out. Uh, we're rather fortunate that I understand that the uh, sailing is being postponed for the evening, so you're not having, you're not being torn between watching this and watching the race. So you'll have to watch, see how that all finishes tomorrow night. Um, so this hope up at the evening, our quarter all this morning, uh, this evening, sorry, and our hui this evening is to give some background around this discussion that we have been having over the last three years, going on four years now, around Māori wards. So this conversation, and I'll just give a bit of a background, this goes, this conversation goes back to 2013, even maybe even further than that, possibly even 2011. Um, when the question around Māori wards first started to come to the table, uh, the Māori Standing Committee at that time, um, when this question used to come to the table, we kind of understood uh, the lay of the land at, at that time. Uh, we understood as, as, a, as a region and as a council uh, that that question of whether there should be Māori wards or not would be very would become a quite a divisive uh, kaupapa. And the fact that at that time we still had the uh, poll, so if a five percent could be raised between those that were registered to vote to have a mandatory poll, uh, a poll would would have been called, and the outcome of that poll would have been binding on the on the council. And that was all councils, not just regional council, but even our uh, local territorial authority councils. So this cope up also affects Napier, Hastings, Wairo, and Central Hooks Bay. So it's not just restricted to Hooks Bay Regional Council. Uh, so at that time we understood that we were fighting a, a losing argument. So for those first two times that it came to the table, the response back from our Māori Standing Committee was cold. Time is not right. Uh, as, as a wider community, uh, 
we went mature enough to have that conversation. Uh, that kind of changed 2017, uh, when we kind of said to ourselves, it is now time to actually test the waters in regards to the community appetite. So not only the wider community, but our own Māori community as well. Uh, it would be fair to say there are uh, differences of opinion as to whether we should have Māori laws or not, even amongst our own community. And that's where the, the kaupapa started to, to you know, gather some traction uh, and started to become a, a broader conversation than just the Māori standing community. Uh, so in 2017, the question came to the Māori standing committee. We said, we want to test the waters. We believe it is time that there be the question of whether Māori wards should be established is a question that should go, should come to the table. First and foremost, to the Māori Standing Committee, secondly, to Council. Uh, at that time, um, we uh, held huia iwi throughout the rohi, from Wairo through the central Hawke's Bay. Our tai whenua came back to the table and said, we want to see Māori wards established. This reply went to the main table of city of the uh, councils, Hawke's Bay Regional Council, and a vote was taken. Uh, that vote was lost 5-4. And although there was disappointment in regards from our Māori Standing Committee members, uh, we accepted that that was the majority decision. Um, the question came up again in 2020. Uh, there's, there's, there's regulations that always that sit behind all of this. And there's certain windows and time frames where this question can come to the table. And it, it has a, it's almost like a six year uh, window. And within that six years, there's only certain times of that period when you can actually ask this question. Uh, so the question came back up again to the uh, to the table in 2020, or once again, the Māori Standing Committee. And by that time, we had established the uh, Regional Planning Committee had been established. The question also went out to them. Both committees came back unanimously and said, we are still strongly in favour of the establishment of Māori wards. This question then went to the, uh, to the councillors' table uh, and I think that's where most of us catch up with this conversation, um, especially around in regards to the headlines and everything else. Uh, but it'd be fair to say that rather than the council making a decision whether to have Māori wards or not at that time, they kind of chose to uh, keep the board to touch and put it out to um, out into the community that they will consult the community. Uh, they uh, uh, think they think negated the issue around having a poll by doing that. I'm looking at here to see my voice. And so we all we all saw the we all saw the kickback from that. Uh, and you know, it is what it is. Uh, things were said that that were said, uh, but at the end of the day. Um, it didn't sit comfortably with those councillors anyway to start with. Uh, and with uh, our minister, uh, uh, Manaya Mahuta, with her recent uh, legislation changes around uh, the polling, so removing uh, the ability of uh, polls to be taken that were binding uh, on councillors was removed. And as part of that, uh, the question of Māori wars came back up on the table again. Uh, so hence the reason why we, we, if you like, have got this third chance uh, to deal with this question. At the last uh, March, sorry, March, yeah, March the 4th, um, this question came to the, to the councillors once again in, in the form of a workshop. And at that point, uh, the councillors said they will take this to uh, consultation and call for submissions. And this is where we are at today. So this is a prelim to those uh, consultation and submissions that will open mostly late this month, early, early next month, in some period of time. Um, 
I know that there's going to be a number of questions that are going to come from the floor and also a number of questions that are going to come from our audience that are online. I'll ask Leanne very shortly to stand up and just give us an outline of what the regulations are and um, what is the uh, format behind Māori wards and, and how do they become established, uh, who gets to decide on that, who gets to vote on that, who can put themselves forward if there are to be Māori wards and so forth. I think one of the questions that has consistently come up and, and that we will deal with tonight is in regards to mana whenua versus tangata whenua. So we need to understand that Māori wards belong to the Māori uh, electoral role. So that's basically, if, if Māori wards are established, uh, those that are registered on the, on the Māori role have the opportunity to put themselves forward uh, for any Māori constituent seats that um, are, are enacted. And only those that are on the Māori role can actually vote for those seats. I know this has caused some anxiety, uh, especially for Manda Whenua, uh, but we'll deal with that towards the, to the, other, other part, the other half of this week. See. So to our whānau online, well, please please put your questions, but if your questions get answered, can you please delete your, your question so we don't go back over it. Uh, but what we will try to do is we will um, group all the questions up. So I know a lot of questions will be in the same area, so we'll group the questions up and deal with those and we will endeavour to answer all questions. If not tonight, we will come back to you tomorrow and deal with those questions that, that you've raised. Come by, Tim. I don't love her. <laughs> Can't be from my mother. <laughs> so with that, folks, I'm going to come ask Leanne down to just lay out what those regulations are, uh, what their process would be if, if there is a to establish Māori wards, and if they are established, what are the regulations that, that, that control that space? Sure, Leanne. Yeah. Um, I think the first the first thing I'll clear up is this constituency seats um, wards words that we throw around um, uh, if you think about it at the um, general election the, for the whole country we talk about the electorates so a ward is an electorate for a city or a district council and a constituency is what they call the electorate for the regional councils. So we have five currently. They're all general constituencies. Napier, Waru, Central Hawke's Bay, Hastings, and Nauru. Right. So we have the opportunity um, afforded by the um, bill that was passed into law at the end of February um, to reconsider whether to establish uh, Māori constituencies for the Hawke's Bay Regional Council. The council has decided to take this opportunity and go out for consultation to the community um, whether or not that's something that we all think is um, to the benefit of the final decision. Um, what will happen is we'll open for submissions on the 22nd of March, which is next Monday, and we'll be open for submissions for one month, so the submissions will close on the 22nd of April. The reason it is a bit short is because Council needs to make this decision by the 21st of May so that it can be in effect for the elections coming up on the 8th of October 2022. Right, so if they didn't make a, a decision by then, then we'd have to wait until 2025. All right. Um, I'm not certain what else you want to know. Just to do it on the basis of questions coming in, but also, mm -hmm. is, it, is it okay for the camera for tonight or if Leanne was able to sit this yeah. time? Yeah. So, so I think uh, Leanne, so. Thank you for that uh, explanation. So I think what some of the questions would be, if, if 
my constituencies were, were established. What does that mean? What does, what does the process look like? What does that look like? So a Māori constituency would be for the Māori on the Māori electoral roll to vote for their representatives to um, be, have a seat at the council table. Um, if the decision is to establish Māori constituencies, there will be what's called a representation review. So that's when council looks at all of the, the total number of councillors and they say, okay, well, where are our um, communities of interest? Māori would be one community of interest. Um, if the total number of councillors remains at nine or more, then the calculation based on population says that um, Hawks Bay can have two Māori councillors. Okay. Um, so we would, uh, the council um, needs to look at how that might look with the boundaries, the total number of councillors, and then come to some decisions about what they think is the best model of representation for the region. So at, we'll be looking at things like, well, what, what would we do uh, if there's two Māori? Would we have one constituency? Or would it be that the um, region would be split in half, some in one form or another? Um, and have um, elect a representative from each of two Māori constituencies. Then we'll have to look at the, the numbers for the general role after that. Um, and probably the, the starting point would be we would take what we've got and overlay the Māori there on top, just to see what that would look like. Um, we would have to go through a period of consultation on, hey, this is what we think it's going to look like. Um, send in your um, submissions and tell us whether you agree or not. Uh, then they reconsider, and if there's anything that comes out of the submissions that makes them change what that's going to look like, we make those changes and then notify a final representation arrangement, which would have all the constituencies, the boundaries, the names of them, um, and the total number of councillors that would be elected at the next election. Um, all of that gets wrapped up into a nice big parcel and sent off to the local government commission, who then has the final say and looks through everything and makes a determination, either they agree or, or they don't. Most, most often I think they do agree because they, we've taken the time to consult the community to make sure that we are giving them the representation that's fair and equitable. And so hopefully they agree that um, we've looked at that closely enough. So that's the process that happens once the decision is made, if it is to establish the Maori constituencies. Does that come out of us being a treaty partner or not? Not really. So it's one part, would you say? So it does, uh, because we have obligations as a regional council uh, to Te Tiri Te Waitangi and also to the local government act. Yeah. And then there are, there are a number of sections where we're required to uh, provide for decision making of Māori within the decision making of council. So the answer to that is yes it does, but there's also other supporting uh, legislation for that as well. So as you can say, just the answer, once again, that is controlled by uh, electoral regulations that, that come out of Parliament. So once again, we need to remember this has been driven out of Parliament as well. It's not, not just down here at a, at a local level. So they're not making up the rules and the process at regional council. It's been done in Wellington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how would Nanaya's changes affect what you've just could you repeat the question, please? Just put that online. So you're asking how would none the changes in the in Nanaya's um, legislation, how does that affect the process? Yes. Um, so that after the decision, uh, we don't have the 
worry or the concern or whatever it might be that 5% um, of the electing population will come back and say, no, we don't agree, so you have to overturn that decision. That's gone now. Um, so what it would mean is council can make that decision and then go straight forward through the representation review without having any comeback from any other part of the population. So a few changes were put into legislation and made law by this time next year. Would this change the process that we're seeing today in the, in the community consultation? Would we still need to do that? I believe you still have to because of uh, the way the legislation is written around the representation review and what you're actually required to do by law. You can't just, um, the council can't just make the decision and then not have any feedback from anybody. Um, I, I imagine it's because they don't know everything and so to ensure against them thinking that we've talked to everyone who could possibly have um, any ideas about it, we would need to go to consultation and say, okay, well, is there anybody else that we've missed that might have something valuable to contribute? Um, I am, in the back of my mind, I'm aware of further legislative change in the wind, but I'm, I don't really have enough knowledge of what that might look like. Um, there has been quite a bit of feedback saying that, that the bill didn't go far enough. That remains to be seen whether that's taken any further. So the, the main thing was that it used to be that the council could make a decision and say, yes, we're going to establish Māori boards. We have to notify that in the paper and give uh, the public some amount of time in which to come back and demand a poll to overturn the decision was basically what it was. And the biggest thing was that they got rid of that they also got rid of the ability for councils to have a poll. So put the question to the community instead of the council making it themselves. Because under the previous legislation, the poll was binding. It didn't matter who polled it, it was a binding poll. So um, that was that, and then, then her giving the transition period, what she's called the transition period leading up to the 21st of May, for the, all the councils who had been considering it to reconsider and, and make further decisions about it. So that's this process we're engaged in right yes. now? Yes. So just adding to that, so um, prior to that legislation coming through, there were a number of councils who had made the decision to establish Māori wards or Māori constituencies and they had gone and a poll had been called and they had been forced to um, abandon, abandon that. Hence the reason why we have this uh, transitional period is to allow them the opportunity to reconsider that again if they want to carry on that ahead, they can. I looked at Taranaki as being one of those prime, prime examples of that. Uh, this Taranaki, and Taranaki, you know, this is not that long ago, they, a mayor had to step yeah. down just over this particular issue because from, from his point of view, he was seeing what he could consider to be uh, racist, 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 racist behaviour. Uh, and so it forced him to, to step down, he just did not want to be there. So for Taranaki City Council, or the City Council, who turned around and uh, as council said they want to establish Māori wards, that was then overturned by the, by the pop. Uh, so with, with, with Mangai's um, changes, they put that back to the table and once again, they went back to establishing Māori constituencies. Are there any other questions, especially in regards to Leanne, just around... Just a question, Leanne, I'm trying to recall, is there a number fixed to each of the wards and if there is, I mean, in relevance to the general um, population as opposed to the potential of Maori seats, will that be the same? So, um, right, there's two parts to the, to the answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the number of Maori representatives is determined by the population on the Maori roll and 
some sort of calculation that has, that brings into play the total number of councillors on the regional council. So that's the first bit, is that that's set in legislation. We, um, the council won't have any, um, what do we call it, discretion about that decision. That decision's already made. Um, the second part of it is with the, if there's one constituency or two constituencies, if there is one, we don't have to worry. If there's two, the population of each of those constituencies has to be within plus or minus 10% of the other one, so that the two representatives would be representing roughly the same number of constituents. So um, that's a calculation that we also have to do for the general constituencies, but it's done separately. Does that answer your question? Just wondering whether there was a fixed number of the population, obviously. Mm -hmm. Side, how the constituencies are made up. Is it the Māori population? I mean, they are being represented. Yes. So it's it's um, a process of consulting, and of course we would be consulting directly with Māori because it's their constituencies. Um, and so I imagine that we would have to. Um, it doesn't make sense not to to me. Um, and also, it would have to be done in consultation, even just the name. You know, we, um, we couldn't just put that onto the Maori community. It would have to be done in consultation. So that can also be part of, part of this particular consultation and submission round. So if one was in favour of the establishment of Maori constituency, you can actually add to that can start to answer some of these uh, particular questions as well. Are there any other questions for Leanne in regards to, to the process? Can I just ask, um, so what year did you start the process? So, so So I, I, I understand, I think I understand what you're coming from. So unlike a poll or a vote, uh, the council's not looking for a number. So they're not saying, okay, well, X number voted against and X number voted for. They're looking for the ideas and the views and the, um, you know, how, how people think it might work, what the benefits are, those sorts of things so that they can make a, a decision based on um, what they call qualitative yeah. input. So it's the quality of the input, not the quantity that they're looking for. So um, the opportunity does exist certainly for submissions to be made and I think the reason why council uh, has put this out for consultation, now they acknowledge that from both the regional planning committee and from the Māori committee uh, that they are affirming for Māori constituencies. Uh, what they want to do uh, so they can make a decision before the 21st of May is to put this out and see if there is a wider view. So submissions, uh, certainly within that time frame of 22 March to 22 April, 
uh, would be most welcome. And also, Ed, you can make them as simple or as, or as uh, complicated as, as you want. So uh, you can be as simple as, yes, I, I support the establishment of my, my constituents, and that can be the response. Or you can go deeper than that if that's what you, that's what you want to do. I think that's really, really up to you. I think what we are, or what I am asking for, is that at least, uh, at least put a submission in. Even if, even if you don't want to see Māori Wars established, put a submission in. Yeah. But if we, if we sit back and, and just become passengers in this mm -hmm. conversation, mm -hmm. others will make that decision for us. Yeah, yeah but Mike, don't you think they're going to make the decision anyway? Because that's why the, the room is empty. Um, they're not really interested in, well, I'm saying my partner is not really interested in what's what's on the table at the moment mm -hmm. until they really understand what they've lost and what they haven't got. Then they'll jump up and down. Yeah. But at the moment, it's not important for them. So we, the uh, if you like the um, notification and, and the media response is yet to come from Fox Bay Regional Council. Mm -hmm. So we we are getting ahead ahead of this this consultation round uh, and this is just about if you like educating ourselves that this is coming up have a think about it um, start to form your views one way or the other so for those of us that are here and those of us that are online putting the message out to our family um, at least you can have some you can you can answer some of their questions because you've heard it from what we would term here as, as to the mātauranga <coughs> The, uh, the tarifa around this, around this, uh, the regulation and stuff. So it's about us also helping to inform our whānau. Mm -hmm. And we know how hard our, our yeah. whānau are. Yeah. <laughs> They've got no ears. Yeah. Okay. Got a question behind the back there. So who do we get the submissions to? Uh, so all that publication will come out uh, shortly, uh, Monica, uh, and there will be a uh, like a link that you would go to that will allow you to do all that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Marley, I think you can have another question. Yeah, um, look, I mean, the whole premise that this has been driven, particularly out of Parliament, and rightly so, Malaya, I mean, just, it, it was just a fundamental, you know, it borders not just on, um, um, what's that term they call, the, um, it, yeah, oh, the police are now facing it right now in their own review, <laughs> unconscious bias. But, um, you know, um, this is a draconian way by which to address this whole issue that's been sitting in front of Mauritan for since the whole um, local government and all of that. So, um, and then, of course, I, I, I've just heard about the response, and, of course, we know, you know, it's not going to be a numbers game simply in that. It'd be really interesting to kind of get some parameter around what that qualitative assessment, particularly, you know, you're going to get a whole, we're going to be outnumbered. You know, that's why it's really important. I think this is important, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mike, that um, we're actually starting to beat the drum. Um, because, because Kevin is right, you know, um, I think there's a lot of, lot of disillusionment, you know, that we've tolerated. Um, um, tolerated. Um, and, uh, and of course, you know, in a number of respects, quite disheartened in the way local dynamics actually do table up. And of course, being a minority population, you get a sense that there's going to be some, some, you know, over uh, a number that's going to come, and that's just going to say no way. Um, and yet, you know, um, when you add up just a few yeses, and if you don't articulate that without some kind of, you know, um, reasoning behind it all. So um, that is quite key and fundamental, I think, inside where that process will sit within council. And I think, you know, as I say, going back to what Manaya has basically said, you know, this is an instrument that's draconian, it's outdated, it sits around unconscious bias, all those sorts of things. And to be honest, you know, that's the sort of population, that majority that we're going to be facing. Let's wait, put it out there. Um, so it will hinge on, I guess, um, having to mobilise the numbers in a number of respects, and I guess this is just the start for that, Mike, um, to kind of get that out there. And we only know, it's just like voting, 
I mean, um, in a normal general election. Um, and of course, it's really trying to get that message right back to home. Um, at least, you know, you got sent an envelope out and all you had to do was tick the box. Um, this one has to be by motivation that you are going to pick up a submission form and actually send it in, which may, creates another further potential barrier of accessing in a way that's quite um, equal or balanced in, in that respect. So um, it's just those kind of little details and then who's going to be reading this? Who's going to make the... I hope there's a framework around what that qualitative, qualitative assessment will start to really um, harpen, on, harpen on. And you can't get away from what Namai had said. I mean, the things that she said is basically what's creating this whole game chain. But the basis of the population is so that we're going to be outnumbered. And it's just that's so critical in terms of that assessment um, and outcome. And, and I guess uh, that's very much what underpinned uh, the change that was brought the amendments to the bill that Nanaya led uh, in quite a paced way, uh, I might add. So in some respects, uh, that was the greatest obstacle that stood not just for Hawke's Bay Regional Council, but for many other councils across the country, uh, was that 5% petition uh, poll. That's now been put to the side, and that rather opens the gate up. Uh, so the councillors have not taken a position at this point in time. That's the reason why uh, we're consulting and we appreciate the invitation from the Taifina for tonight's hui, but there'll be another four hui uh, that will be conducted over the April period. Uh, and that is to try and, uh, one, put out the reasons in behind what's happening here and, to ga and for the councillors to gauge the submissions uh, all of the responses that come back, like Monica's brought up, mm -hmm. uh, that come back, and they'll make a decision of that before the 21st of May as to which way they want to go. Uh, when it comes to submissions, will they only accept like uh, personal ones, or do you accept submissions from the and all of that? Yes, definitely from the would be fine. Um, so we're, uh, the plan is to use as much social media to try and get to the younger um, voters as well. And also, hopefully, with the um, help of the Tai Whenua, getting the Pānui out there so that we can get the best response possible. I do genuinely believe that they are being um, open in this consultation and that um, that we will get a result. <laughs> and that sounds like a really good submission. Yes. So currently it works. Up that 
everybody is on a general roll. Is that right? Māori, non-Māori. And we get to vote on who we want as a councillor in your constituency. Three seats for Hastings, three in Nega, etc. So if it is decided that there, uh, there's going to be a Māori constituency, how will you determine um, uh, which role you sit on? Is it the current one, who are currently selected to be put on, will you use that information that we've currently tipped to be on the Māori role? Or will there be another one sent out to decide for us, or for us to decide if we want to be on the Māori role or the general role? Another fresh hook. Um, so it'll be, you're already enrolled on the Māori role. So there was just a process, and I can't remember offhand what it was called, but where they came around and there was a big um, opt-in, opt-out, yes. So they do that every five years. So the last one was in 2018. Yep. There won't be another one until 2023. Unless you're a new, Unless you're yeah. a new voter or if you are re-registering after having been overseas or something like that. Um, and so all it means is that the people that were on the Māori roll for the um, general elections will still be on the Māori roll for the local elections as well. It's just, it, it hasn't been separated out before. I think the next review for that comes in 2024. Oh, okay. Do we get an opportunity to know how many Māori have placed themselves on the general roll for this area or on the Māori roll? Yes, that information is, 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 is available. Yeah. So I think it's um, 24, 24% of the population is basically Māori. Um, and of that, about 12% is on the Māori roll. Oh, half. Half, yes, about half. Don't hold me to that figure, but it's roughly about half. So in answer to your question, if you are currently on the Māori roll, and these, uh, in this, uh, this electric is established, you will only have the opportunity to partake in that Māori electorate, just that vote alone. As the end said, official. Mm -hmm. That comes a strategy, doesn't it? It's a strategy on how we vote as Māori. Mm -hmm. Understand yes. those numbers. Yes. But then we have that same issue when we get to the general election. Yes, it's actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just changed 2018, and well, with this Maori thing coming up, I want to go back on the Maori. Yeah, and I know you said 2023, but there's no circumstances because we didn't know this was coming up. No, to be to, to, you know, top of my head, the answer that would be no. Oh, I'll give my children one. Yes, I've got seven of them. <laughs> Any, any further questions? <laughs> Can a decision be made by a third party? A third decision in regards to? No. No. So the short, short answer to that is no. It, it is a decision for regional council, and, 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 and the council is at this stage. Uh, but as I said at the start, this question is going to be uh, going to be asked of all of our councils, not just regional. So this has a wider, far wider, wider implication than just regional council. Mm. Mm. It's more, more of a statement. It's more of a statement about how fair, actually counting your participation in the Māori role when you're voting on social health education, then now to be placed in the Māori role again to only be accountable to the environment. 
And so I wonder if there is a misplacement of our, of our right to be either on the Māori role or general role in our region, and our choice also to be on the Māori role or general role in a national election. I think there are two different topics that we should have the right to decide for ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So, regardless of whether you're in favour of establishing the Māori Awards or not, I'm going to suggest to you, as part of your submission, that you that you put that into your submission, because that can actually help feed back, to, back at, at a national level. Because at the end of the day, this is a conversation that has to take place in Parliament, but the conversation starts here. It starts here, it's something we, uh, we gather up as part of the overall consultation around here, and we pass that along to back up to, to or down to Wellington. Uh, but as, as not a, as not just a simple answer of establishing Māori constituents or not. It never ever was. I, I think the big question, and I think just to move our conversation along, so the big, why did the Māori Standing Committee and the Regional Planning Committee say let's, let's establish Māori wards? Because that's really what it's, what it's about. So for us, it really was a question, first and foremost, around treaty. The ability to have a Māori voice that was able to give a Māori point of view and unlucky, only that to not under tier of view, and didn't have to worry about the rest of the constituency who were non Māori and how they may have felt about, about someone's response. I'm sure, like myself, many of you in the room and online were proud that we had two Māori who got themselves elected onto the regional council. They were the first. There had been none up to that point. So, uh, Councillor Hinawai Ormsby and Councillor um, Charles Lambert, you know, I was really proud when they, when, they, when they got themselves elected. But I was also sad at the same time, because I understood the dilemma that they were going to be placed in. That we would all see, right, you've got a Māori voice at that table. Well, in actual fact, not quite true. Because they're there representing the wider con con constituency. That's their role. And if, if they're being um, tutu in their, in their, in representing their constituency, then they're representing everybody. I also understood that there are the expectations from councillors themselves, non Māori councillors, that, oh, he won't, he got the Māori voice. I also knew there'd be expectations from within officers, within councils. Oh, good, we got the Māori voice. Oh, God, no, you haven't. You've, you've got a Māori face sitting here. They took it. And they still carry the ahua Māori with them. But unfortunately, they're not mandated to give the view of solely or Māori. They, they have to give that wider, that wider view. Uh, so currently, our two Māori uh, co-chairs of the Māori Standing Committee, we sit at the regional council's table when they have their regional council meetings. We voice what we believe to be the opinion of, of, our, of our father. But there is no vote for us. So we can't fuck a mana our words by by putting our, putting our hand up and saying, this is where we are. We, we can't do that. There are a number of votes that actually are quite tight around that table, and they, a lot of times they, there's just one or two votes in it. If there was a Māori vote there, or Māori voice there, you know, we could change the outcome of one of those decisions. For the sheer fact we are now participating fully in that, in that process. So, despite all the officials, and there are many, there are many, we still feel it is the right decision to give effect to our voice. To actually, when we talk about to actually be able to have the ability to practice it by being able to cast a vote at that table. 
if this is some type of partnership, then surely my voice has to be worth more than just giving advice. If we, are, if we in 2021, are still just ask for our advice, then, you know, heck up, we haven't come very far. In 181 years, that's the sign of what we are treated. So, that's where the thinking was in regards from the Māori Standing Committee and the Hawke's Bay Regional, sorry, not, and the Regional Planning Committee. Uh, the other question that keeps popping up is in regards to mana whenua versus tamata whenua. So as we know, the Māori role is made up of all those who choose to put themselves on the Māori role in a particular constituency. It's not about what iwi they come from. It's not about whether they fuck a papa to this particular whenua or not. It's just the fact that they happen to reside in this particular boundary. And so the question is, will mana whenua, if you like, so even if Māori wards were established, does that guarantee that there be mana, mana whenua voice at that table? No, it doesn't. Not, not, a, not in that situation. But mana whenua has its voice through the Regional Planning Committee because we come through our post-settlement entities. And as we know, that's total. It would be total when it comes to treaty, treaty claims. So, it's mana whenua who sit on the Regional Planning Committee. The Māori Standing Committee, once again, it comes through our tai whenua. So we know, once again, that's toto. So it's mana whenua, uh, if you like, driving those two, those two committees. So the mana whenua voice is actually captured uh, within those, within those two, two frameworks. So at the end of the day, it, it really is a, a question of tunnel under Tiritan. If, if you actually believe that that belt that we should have it, uh, versus we stand the status quo. And for those who sit up, those of us who sit in those spaces, how long can we sit there and just be a voice of uh, advice, advisor? How long, you know? Because it, it does get hoha. It does get hoha sitting there. When we pour our 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 our, 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 our wider out on, onto the table, and at the end of the day that can be simply dismissed. I understand that there's a, a number of comments or perhaps part I earlier on I mentioned about Tai Finwa Hui, four of them and uh, people have been querying as to whether there will be four and how they'll be placed still located uh, and so uh, we haven't uh, we're just going through the process of confirming the venues and the dates and the times what we are trying to do <coughs> is to make sure they're in each of our four tai whenua uh, through the regional council area so tamatea heretauna ahuriri and then up to pai Do we have any questions online? I thought two fingers go up. So I take it to be 12 years. The answer to that is yes, but that would mean that they would have to be voted there. So I think we, uh, a good way to demonstrate this is Wairo. As we know, Wairo had established Māori wars. And it did go through, go through a poll. But with a, with a greater population being Māori, uh, they were actually able to trigger that. So there are three Māori um, seats on that council that are, con uh, are contained within that Māori con constituency. Two of those seats are actually held by Tangata Whenua. But they sit there with the support of Mana Whenua because they have the trust in them. They know that they have the passion and they have their best interest at, at heart. So, yes, uh, someone from Naipo could sit at that table, but we would have to put them there at the end of the day. 
So the point that was brought up earlier on uh, about what Hinewe and, and Baden are doing in terms of promoting people into the space. So it links in very closely with that. Uh, these two run together. So it's to be promoted, what Hinewe and what uh, Baden are doing. Trying to get Māori uh, to understand the space and to aspire in that space in the political arena. Just returning to the, uh, the to the Wairau question, so there's the three Māori constituent seats, two of those are held by Tangi Te Whenua, one by Mana Whenua, and there's also a Māori representative in the general seats. So, you know, so yeah. Māori, Māori representation does not necessarily have to be confined to Māori Wotei. There are five Māori councils up there. So sorry, I'm just going to make this one. So you're saying the Māori Whenua group are already capturing governance through the Regional Planning Committee and the Māori Standing Committee. If so, I disagree. If a Māori mandated voice is missing from the councillor table, how would that be the expression of Tinorana Te Rakitanga? And I think that is the question that we are asking of him, yeah. And hence the reason why both of those committees have supported the establishment of Māori Wards. Any other parts like on the floor? There was a question about equal. Yep. So, yeah, so that's the, you know, there, there should be equal uh, number of seats for mana whenua or Māori and, and non-Māori at, at, at the council table. Once again, please include that in your submissions if you want to think, um, make comments around that. But at the end of the day, we are controlled by the regulations as they currently are. So it's going to take a change in Parliament to, to create, the, create that difference. ...eligible to stand for election and that they are nominated by two electors on the Māori electoral roll within the respective area that they are standing for. And to be eligible to stand, this is part of uh, your whāpai. Candidate must be a New Zealand citizen uh, by birth or citizenship ceremony. Enrolled as a parliamentary elector anywhere in New Zealand. Nominated by two electors whose names appear on the electoral roll within the respective area or constituency that a candidate is standing for. Candidates cannot stand for a general and a Māori constituency in the same region at the same time. Any further part time? Yes. Any other part time? I hope people have found this informative. I think that's the reason why we came out this evening was to get ahead of this. Because as we can see, it is a complicated process. It, is, it isn't an easy question. It isn't an easy question. Some do, some don't. Some body don't even know. <laughs> so the submission process, I'll hand back over to the end. Okay, um, so submissions are all open on the 22nd, which is next Monday. And they'll be open for a period of a month. We're going to mainly um, concentrate on online, so there will be links um, on Facebook, also on our um, Hawke's Bay Regional Council website. We'll also have printed material available. If anybody wants it, they can just um, request it and we will send it out or um, potentially put them around at the libraries and things like that. Um, and then once submissions close, we'll have a couple of weeks to um, 
gather those all together and give them to councillors, and then there'll be um, two days set aside for hearings. So if people want to speak to their submissions, they can come along and do that on the 3rd and 4th of May. And then uh, the decision will be made on the 19th of May, which is a Wednesday. Yes, that has already been answered, and, and the answer there was yes. Throw the question up in the air, and then I'll answer it. Um, uh, so this is about uh, being able to see through the, the the process that we would go through into towards the 2022 elections. Mm -hmm. So if the scenario was uh, that uh, following consultation, uh, the council resolved to establish Māori constituencies, and as you've heard from Leanne, that would have to happen uh, uh, before the 21st of May. Uh, then the process of that establishment will look a wee bit like this. In July to November, there will be the representation review. Uh, so Leanne talked about that right at the beginning. And that would determine how many constituencies there would be, how many councillors there would be, and what the names and the boundaries of the constituencies would be. By the 8th of September, council must give public notice of initial proposal of the constituencies by the 8th of September. By the 19th of November, that's this year, council must give public notice of the final representation arrangements uh, that, that, that come to. By the 11th of April next year, 2022, the Local Government Commission must issue its determination, and that's confirmation of Hawke's Bay Regional Council representation arrangement for both the 2022 and the 2025 elections. And then on the 8th of October next year, 2022, will be our next local government elections. And so that's sort of looking through our process. Any further part on it? In an online? No, it's great. So everybody's taking that in. Clear as mud. <laughs> I saw your hand go. Mm. It's sometimes slowly is, is the fastest way. <laughs> so, just in. Just going to summarise up and close this up. So, just in summarising again, so the question around whether there should be Māori Wars or not is going to come out. So, because um, Hospital Regional Council have already embarked on that process. So, the real question that is going to be asked of all of us is actually whether we want to see Māori Ward seats established or not. And despite what your answer is, one way or the other, I think it's incumbent on you to put a submission in that supports your, supports your reasoning, one way or the other. We've also heard that there are a number of fish hooks in this, and a lot of those are certainly not, not um, very uh, appealing to us. So here's the opportunity for us to actually comment on those fish hooks as well, and actually make our views known about those. Although it won't uh, affect or shouldn't affect the actual outcome in regards to the council's decision making, what it will do is help formulate a bigger conversation that's going to have to take place uh, down in Wellington. And I, we need to remember that this conversation is happening all over Aotearoa. It is not just here. The fish hooks that have been identified here are the same fish hooks in all of our regions. And I suspect many of the feelings that we have expressed here tonight are going to be feelings that have been expressed in, in those particular uh, rohe. And so it's about how do we how do we manage those those issues that, that, that we've identified. Uh, it's just not enough to sit there and, and keep kicking the stone. We've got to try and do something about them. And it's by utilising the, these, these submissions, regardless of your point of view, whether um, Mighty War should be established or not. 
So as we know, as been explained to us, there's going to be uh, some more uh, hui, but these will be driven directly from Oxbow Regional Council. Uh, they'll be Taifenua based, so for our four Taifenua, because that makes up the, the, the rohi of the Oxbow Regional Council. It also affects um, it also affects Tufani Tor, the tip of Tufani Tor, and also into uh, Tumhoi. And you early say yes. So it's not just Kahanunu. Yeah, it's not just us. Uh, but it, it just kind of captures the tips of those ones. So they're, we're a bit of a pain in the, pain in the side to them. Uh, more than... Uh, so their, their real focus is back on their own particular law here, their own regional councils and local territorial authorities. Once again, I just want to highlight this. This will actually overflow into our local territorial authorities. This will impact on what happens, how Hastings starts to think about this, how Napier thinks about this, how Central Park State thinks about this question. Because it's the question that they have to answer themselves as well. So it is really important that we engage at this stage. Okay? So once again, just thank everybody for coming along this evening. Uh, those that came in person, especially those online, who took the time out, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your questions. If we haven't answered your questions, uh, and if you believe that we haven't, uh, please just highlight that and we will uh, get back to you uh, personally one on one and, and answer those questions for you. Uh, you've, you've got the dates, you know how this thing's going to run out. And so, for those of that us have, that have come tonight, those of us that have been online, spread the message. I think that's our obligation. We'll keep this online. So you can actually refer people back to our Facebook and they'll be able to come and watch this hui and get some of the answers directly for themselves. I know how hōhā can be to try and relay a message back to our own whānau at times because even though they weren't here, they knew they know what took place at this hui better than you do. <laughs> so you can refer them back to, to the Facebook page. At that, I'm going to hand over to Peter for his final comments and like a cup of water? Oh, Pity? Cup of? Cup of. Kia ora tato, and perhaps just to tāpiri uh, as part of that summary that uh, Mike has given us uh, tonight, uh, just to say uh, or to reiterate that the councillors have not taken a position at this point in time and they're really waiting to hear back the voluminous submissions uh, that might come forward uh, both from, you know, uh, particularly between the 22nd of March and the 22nd of April. There will be a lot that will go up on our website at that point that opens up that consultative and submission period. Uh, so there will be lots of links uh, both online and written if uh, people are still using uh, what are those things? Crayons, pens, and paper. Koina. But he too did me. He can make your kuto the taifinoa or hiritana. Takuto koi, takuto kakam. I get too my tene, tene hui. More way. More my mari, get more hiwa, tene kopapa, a high reana. あの、<笑><笑> いや、日本ね。あ、どれだ。あ、会が、ちょっと待っ
ka ura te rā ki tōna kōmata ka pari te tai ki tōna pūkenga. Ko te pua wai ka pua wai hea e kākara tai āwhio. Ko haina ki te ao. As the sun achieves its zenith, and as the oceans their tidal grasp of the whenua, and as the bud that blossoms to full bloom, thence are our senses enlightened and enlivened by gifts bequeathed to us unsurpassed. Koe nā tātou e te atu, e tūku tēnei whakamoi me te kiākoe. Nā unei e nā e kōlo hea rā i a tātou, te taiao me ona a tā huatanga. Mō wai rā e tā ko hāmai e noho nei kei wai nui rā i a tātou. Mana ki hea mai rā i a tātou, mai i te wehinga o tēnei hui, mai i te wehinga o tēnei whare. A whina arohaina mai i o tātou nei whanaunga e noho nei ki rūtu i ngā whare hei. Kei roto hoki e tūno rō nei ke roto i ngā hohi pera, puta noa kei roto e i o te aro nei. Hoki mai rā kia tātau, kia hua ki ngā i tata tātau o te whare, mō tā mātou nei ake whānau e tātari ana o te hoki ngā mai. A nei rā e tūku tēnei whakamoe me te ki a koe, kia tau kia tātou katoa, te āta whai i o tātou eriki o i hukaraiti, te aroha o te atu. Me te whiwhinga tahi tangi ki te wairu o tāku. Āke, āke, āke. Āmen. Kia ora tātā. Kia ora, kia ora. Kia ora.